Hi folks, we're going to take a look at GDC techniques for paper two on the IB uh, Math SL uh, papers. Uh, this is a comprehensive list of GDC techniques, but it is by no means an exhaustive list. Um, what that means is that you can get everything done with what I'm going to show you here. That's not to say that there aren't other ways to do it on your calculator. Uh, so if you have another way of doing something, feel free to do that. Uh, we're going to start off looking at the functions. You need to be able to enter functions, choose appropriate window settings, um, maybe copy down a graph showing maxima, minima, uh, and axis intercepts. You need to be able to use basically everything that's in the calc menu. Um, the first one's not that important though. So to start off with, let's put these two functions uh, in our GDC. 2x squared minus 12x plus 13, oh dear, I didn't put squared, there we go, and the function x plus 1. I can graph that uh, with my standard window by going to zoom 6, there we go. Not surprisingly, we have a parabola and we have a linear graph with a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 1. If we wanted to say find f at negative 0.7, it might be a pain to put, actually put it into this function uh, and figure out what negative 0.7 squared is and, and so on. We certainly could do it, uh, or we can just go to the value. So second, calc, I go for value, and I just look at what happens at negative 0.7 on my first function. And it tells me that I get a y value of 22.38, which, of course, we can write exactly as 22.38, or we can give to 4. Uh, three sig figs as 22.4. Zeros. These are the x-intercepts of a graph. So we could easily find the x-intercepts of, say, our parabola. Now, we've got to give it a left bound. And notice how it tells me up in the upper left corner that I'm looking at y1, at my parabola. So I'm going to go to the left of one of the intercepts and to the right and guess gives us a 0 at 1.42. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the x values. f at x equals 0. At x equals 1.42. And also, there's another one we can see from the graph. 0. Let's go to the left of our other value, which is... I don't know, around 4. And I can just type in something to the right. So I'll go to 6 and just guess. And it gives me 4.58. Max min. Well, on our two graphs, you can see that the linear one is always increasing. But the parabola does have a minimum. So on a paper two, rather than trying to complete the square and put it in uh, a x minus h all squared plus k form in vertex form, the easier thing to do is just look for that minimum. So I'll press second calc three. I'll go to the left of the minimum, which is around, I don't know, two-ish. And right of the minimum, well, I'd be around four. And take a guess. Oh, there we go. So we have a minimum value at 3 of negative 5. This is our min, is negative 5. Okay, you could do the same for a max if it existed. Now, intersect is probably the single most important uh, function to know how to use. So we can find the points of intersection between two curves. If we want to find out where f at x from our last slide, and g at x intersect. Well, I can see on my graph that there are two points of intersection. So I go second calc 5, and it just asks me, is this the first curve? Yes, it is. The y1 is my first curve. The y2 is my second curve. There are another, no other curves in there, so there's no chance for, uh, for ambiguity. And then I go and guess close to that first point of intersection. So there's an intersection at 1.11, 2.11. And there's another intersection 
I go through the process again. First curve, yep, that's my first curve. Yes, that's my second curve. I'm going to guess. Looks like it's around 5. Maybe I'll just type that in. And it's at 5.39, 6.39. So on a paper 2, there's no point in trying to find points of intersection analytically. That is, setting the two uh, equations equal to each other. It's always going to be easier to defer to your GDC. Sometimes you get equations that are impossible to solve analytically. This one here, the one in green, has an x in the exponent, and it also has a regular x down below with the 2. So we don't really have any ways to solve it, but the way we can solve it with our GDC is to put y1 in for the left-hand side, y2 in for the right-hand side, and see where they meet. So I'm going to turn off the uh, y1 and y2. I'll actually use y3 and y4 here. It doesn't matter which ones you use. So 3e e to the x and 2x plus 6. Okay. I'll go ahead and graph that. See if there are any solutions. And yes, they certainly meet. So I find that point of intersection. First curve, yep, is y3. Second curve is y4. Go over to that point of intersection to guess. So there's a solution to this at 0.974. Now notice this was a single variable equation. It just had an x. So there's no point putting down the y coordinates where they meet. The solution is just the x value. If you know what an exponential graph looks like, though, you know that there's a second solution. So first curve, second curve, and there looks like there's another solution down around negative 3, around here. And lo and behold, there is, negative 2.92. That feature is going to be extremely important on a paper, too. Uh, you're very likely to run into some question that doesn't have a good analytical way to solve uh, the equation, so you defer to your GDC. And you can solve any equation on your paper 2 using this method. dy by dx, or the derivative, finds the slope of the tangent at any point on the curve. So say we wanted to find the slope of f at x at x equals, I don't know, at x equals 5. Really, that means we're looking for f prime at 5. And rather than actually differentiate f and then plug it back in, we can just go, uh, first of all, I have to put my f at x back on the graphs. I'll turn off the other ones. Okay. So there's my parabola. I can see at 5 that it should be a positive slope. It should be fairly steep. I'll go second calc 6 for dy by dx. And just tell it to look at what happens at 5. And it tells me that the slope of the curve there is 8. If you had differentiated uh, f at x, we would have gotten f prime at x. Is, let's see, what was our equation? We would have had 4x minus 12. Okay, so f prime at 5 would have been 4 times 5, which is 20, minus 12. Oh my gosh, there it is. Now, you don't save that much time doing this one with your GDC since it's so easily differentiable, uh, but for ones that take a little more time, the GDC can save you a little effort. All right, if we wanted to find uh, the definite integral over some interval, then we would use the inter integral function. Uh, so let's suppose we want area bounded by f at x and g at x. So I'll go and turn those two on. Here's what it looks like. So I've got this region over here that's bounded by the two curves. 
I actually already know where those intersections occur. And the first one is 1.11, and that's what we found in question 5. And the upper boundary is 5.39. I also know which curve is on top. G at X is on top here, the line. So it's going to be G at X minus F at X dx. Now, you can sub in and you can integrate, or you can just put in those functions. So for my fifth y here, and you could clear things out if you wanted to, I'm going to say uh, g at x, which was x plus 1, minus the whole of f at x. So I'll use brackets here, 2x squared minus 12x plus 13. I'm going to have a different looking curve now, but that's okay. And I have a curve that has x-intercepts at 1.11 and 5.39. Now I can just go and do my uh, definite integral. Second calc 7, the lower limit is at 1.11. The upper limit's at 5.39. And we get an area of... Uh, 26.0 square units. That's not to say you're not responsible for being able to find a definite integral without your GDC, uh, but there's the fast way of doing it with your GDC. As far as matrices go, you need to be able to input matrices of any order, perform operations, all this stuff is under your matrix menu. Raise a square matrix to an exponent. Find the determinant of a square matrix. And that's just uh, the determinant is under your matrix menu. And just go over to math. So debt. Find the inverse of a square. Uh, you also need to be able to find the inverse of a square matrix without a GDC. Some key ideas. The, determin uh, the dimensions of matrix are number of rows by number of columns. Order matters when multiplying matrices. Division of matrices is impossible. And a matrix only has an inverse if it's square and its determinant is not zero. Just quickly looking at a few non-GDC related things. If AX equals B for matrices, that means you'd have to pre-multiply both sides by the inverse of A to isolate X. If xA equals b, this is slightly more un uncommon, but it, you could get a question like this, uh, then you'd have to post-multiply both sides by the inverse of a. Similarly, if you had some question that was set up with the inverse of a times x, you'd have to pre-multiply both sides, so you'd get x equals a, b. And if it were x times the inverse of, uh, of a, you'd have to post-multiply both sides by a. So again, order, meaning the sequence of multiplication, matters for, uh, for matrices. Uh, we're going to stop right here and pick it up in part two uh, with statistics.